did you get up to this month? Nothing? Okay, bye. Hey all, it's Stasi, and today we are here for my May wrap up. We're sitting on the floor because uh, that's, uh, that's the level we're at right now. <laughs> I mean, it's Friday night, so, you know, stuff happens. And uh, May was actually my birthday month. I turned 27 on the 17th of May. If you have not already seen my birthday week vlog, I did actually talk about a number of books I'm about to talk about in that vlog. And it was probably, and the discussions I had in my vlog are probably going to be more detailed than what I'm going to say today, if you are interested in that. It was a bit weird from the perspective of, it was the first birthday I'd had and hadn't had like a birthday party. But it was kind of good timing because restrictions actually loosened like that week to the extent that I was able to at least see a few of my closest friends and family on my birthday. So that was nice. But I did also get a decent amount of reading done this month. So we're going to just hop on, hop, hop straight on into talking about books, I guess. The first thing that I read in May was Soul Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. This is a young adult horror and I really enjoyed it. So I'm glad that I am still finding uh, YA that I enjoy considering last year I had a bit of a media core experience with it. But uh, in this story where somewhere where girls keep going missing and they are presumed dead and people don't really know what's happening to them though and there's some you know supernatural dark gruesome stuff happening on the island and there's themes of like friendship and female empowerment and this book is also very queer you've got like women loving women you have asexual rep and that's all really lovely to see and I was really engaged in the story. I really liked the spooky atmosphere of this book. I liked that there was some gruesome elements because I like when books don't necessarily shy away from darker elements, which I guess is one of the reasons I enjoy horror in general. And I also really enjoyed the themes of this book. And I will say that if you're someone who gets, you know, really funny about uh, this book leans on the over-the-top feminism. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but just to the extent of there were some things said in this book that even had me, an angry feminist, uh, going a bit like, is that a bit much? Because they were, you know, talking about how horrible men are and those kind of comments. So if that bothers you, and you're the type of person who doesn't like seeing that in your stories, like, stay away from this book. But I... Really enjoyed it. I think I gave it 4 out of 5 overall. Like, do recommend, especially uh, with Pride Month coming up. Uh, got to appreciate those queer books. The next book I read was Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. And this is an adult fantasy. Dark Academia. This is an adult fantasy where you've got a girl who can see ghosts and so she has been recruited and given a scholarship to an Ivy League university or college as I guess America says and in exchange she has to help keep an eye on the secret societies and the shiz that there's they're getting up to which involves a lot of magic and other dark shiz and I know there was a lot of discussion around this book in terms of trigger warnings and things like that and if you're someone who needs trigger warnings and there's certain things that you can't be exposed to, definitely look into it for this book because there were definitely some things that I felt physically uncomfortable reading. But overall, I did really enjoy this book and I'm looking forward to seeing where the series goes. I will say that... Uh, I found it quite slow to get into at least like the first hundred pages I didn't really care about what was going in on what was going on but once I was hooked I was like really hooked I thought there were interesting characters there were interesting things going on I wanted to know what exactly was happening because there were like you know kind of some mystery kind of elements and things that aren't straight up revealed 
and yeah I gave it four out of five again because I found it so slow to get into but really enjoyed it I really enjoyed the darkness I'm a bit of a weird one because the things I enjoy are generally either really dark or really kind of over-the-top fun. So I also recently posted one of those uh, one of those things on Twitter that was like, what vibes do I give off? And people were saying basically the row that was all black and the row that was all pink. I'm like, yeah, that's fair enough. That's I'm one of those people. Uh, but that's getting off topic. And this book's been a bit divisive. I enjoyed it, but found it very slow to get into. And yeah, uh, particularly the one, the, particularly the, the thing that really got to me. So I, I want to give a warning for that. If you don't want to hear any warnings. Uh, skip ahead a few seconds but child rape that was the thing that really really got to me in this book and I had to yeah I had to just kind of sit there for a bit and whew. anyway <laughs> then we get into a bunch of books that I have spoken about already in my vlog the first one, which is The Last Wish by, I don't, I don't know how to say his name, it's like Andre Sapowski, Sapowski, I have no idea to be honest, I butcher names and I'm sorry, but this is a collection of short stories for The Witcher, I think chronologically it is first, so that's why I read it first. I have played a bit of the games previously and I've also previously watched the Netflix series so I did have an idea of what was going on in these stories and what they were to begin with and I think I acknowledge that I also may have some personal bias going into these stories having already already having some affection for them and this was my first five star read of the year adult fantasy interesting characters, interesting creatures, and I really enjoyed Geralt, particularly as a character. I mean, there's a scene where he like has a coin purse and he knocks someone out with it and then makes some comment like, hmm, coin really does open doors. <laughs> Iconic. Iconic. I think he's becoming one of my favorite characters which is not something I ever thought I would say not as something I necessarily felt initially from playing the games but the show and that book yeah there's see that there's a, there is a bit of that humor to these stories which is something I personally really enjoy too which is also why I loved um, the show so much wow how did I end up with lipstick all over my hand how do I do these things then again something that I've already spoken about and this was my lowest rated read of the month uh, and that is Mayhem by Estelle Law, Estelle Lore. Uh, I think I gave this 2.5 overall because I had mixed feelings about it. This was actually an arc that I was offered through NetGalley. I don't remember when it comes out, sometime this year. Maybe June or July? Uh, but it is a book that boasts being infl being inspired by The Lost Boys and The Craft, which are an 80s and 90s movie respectively with supernatural themes. And that got me immediately interested in this book because The Lost Boys is my favourite uh, movie. You know, 80s vampire cult classic. And there aren't actually any vampires in this book. And yet so much is pulled directly from the Lost Boys to the extent that it's kind of uncomfortable and I really disliked the last page of this book because they pulled like a quote directly from the Lost Boys that had nothing to do with this book whatsoever. Uh, otherwise there were there were some interesting things going on with the story and vibe of this book so oh I, I that's why I'm, I feel really torn about it and I don't know whether if 
I don't know if I wasn't so familiar with the Lost Boys whether I would have enjoyed this more or where, whether I would have thought it was even stranger that there were things in this book that didn't seem to fit or be relevant to the story. I feel like it could have gone either way. Uh, I have seen a lot of people reviewing this highly and I wonder whether they knew about The Lost Boys previously. I also mentioned, I think when I talked about it in my vlog, that this book, what part of the appeal of it is also that it feels very nostalgic. Uh, if you're someone who grew up in the 80s or grew up on 80s movies, like I did, I was born after the 80s, but I grew up on 80s movies and obviously have a lot of love for The Lost Boys, so it had a lot of kind of nostalgia. But it's a YA book, so it's a bit like, who is this book for? Because most... You know, current teenagers, I can't imagine being that nostalgic about the 80s. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've talked about this book before. I still feel have mixed feelings. But, I don't know, it's a thing that's coming out soon. And um, if nothing else, if you've never seen The Lost Boys, go watch it. Although actually, it's one of those movies I've made like majority of my friends watch over the years. And almost no one has liked it. They both disliked it and it makes me very sad, but yeah. Then I read uh, the last things I actually completed uh, for the month of May, which again I've already talked about the first book, uh, and that is the Hidden Legacy series by Lona Andrews. This is an adult urban fantasy series. I believe I read the first three books and it was actually a reread for me. I have read them previously. I wanted to reread them because things are weird at the moment and I just wanted something familiar that I knew I would really enjoy. Uh, I'm just noticing Twilight is behind me and it's giving me some feelings that aren't so great. I don't know how I feel about the fact Midnight Sun's coming out. That's completely off topic but I don't know if it's something that needs to exist and is it just capitalizing on something that should be long dead by now? I loved this series as a teen- anyway, this is completely off topic. I- I don't know where my head is right now. But anyway, what was I talking about? Hidden Legacy, Lona Andrews. The first one is Burn For Me and urban fantasy, magic exists in this world. Uh, and it affects the literal power dynamics within the world because different families have strong magic. And the more magic you have, the more powerful you are within this society. And there are a lot of people then who are going to be unhappy with the way society is structured and who has the power. And so there are people trying to do something about it. And I think these first three books, I have, haven't yet to read beyond these first three books. But I think they are meant to be like a trilogy and that the other books are following other characters. I might be wrong. In these books you are following Nevada, who is someone whose magic allows her to instantly tell whether someone is lying. And in the first book she is forced into a situation where she has to help track down and bring in a dangerous criminal who has fire magic and that also makes her cross the path of a powerful crime, the crime being the most powerful magic users in this society, uh, by the name of Mad Rogan. And there is a romance in these books which you would assume from the dang awful covers, they are so bad, uh, but I actually found that the romance is fairly minimal in the first book uh, to an extent that I thought it was more present but it's not. It really kind of ramps up in the second and third book including sex scenes if that's something that bothers you but uh, yeah the first book is probably my favorite it's the one I rated for five stars then I read White Hot I think is the next one which I read 4.5 stars mainly because the sex scene made me cringe <laughs> and then the last one I think is Wildfire and I rated that four out of five stars because again the sex scene made me cringe but there were also elements of kind of women being pitted against each other for man's attention which it which, which it wasn't it was done in like a good way of like 
it wasn't as bad as it could have been but it still bothers me a little bit when that kind of stuff's present in stories and the other thing is the mad rogan character so the love interest for this series is one of those you know very powerful angry type of men uh and in the first book i just didn't i really enjoyed their banter and their chemistry but in by the third book he was saying things like any man that you look at i want to kill and that's not sexy that's it's, it's not sexy dude like that being that possessive is 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 kind of gross to me uh i really enjoyed these books though because the story the magic and the characters i really enjoy the characters especially like nevada has this big family and the family dynamics and how diverse the characters are even within the family let alone outside and in the world uh i really enjoy so that was a good time revisiting those books so i believe that is everything that I read in May. I, oh, actually, I did also complete two Stephen King short stories. So I'm reading through this at the moment. Uh, Stephen King goes to the movies. So it is a collection of his shorter works, which have all been made into movies. And at this time, I think this was published like early 2000s. So movies that had come out from then. And I've read two of them so far. I've read 1408, which I really enjoyed. I really liked that story. It is about an author who essentially makes his living uh, writing about him staying in haunted places. And so he has heard about this hotel room. And so he goes to spend a night in the hotel room and shiz happens. It was kind of typical spooky horror exactly what you would expect uh but i really enjoyed that and then the other thing i read was the mangler which is it's an industrial some type of machine it's like a washing machine or a dryer or something and it's like possessed i didn't enjoy that one as much but i also read that one between like breaks the week i was working so i probably also wasn't kind of like as tuned into it uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying going through some of King's works. I've now read, I've read Salem's Lot, I've read It, um, and I've read some short stories in this one. And I also have another short story collection that I think I have read some of previously. So yeah, I do really enjoy Stephen King's writing. The one problem I have found so far is that sometimes the way he writes women and even young girls can be very questionable about outside of that uh i'm enjoying getting into his work i know one of his book books that i really want to get to sooner than rather than later that i don't actually own yet is carrie but other than that i don't really know where i'm going to go next but all the same i'm enjoying the journey I realized that I forgot to mention the graphic novel I read, which is also something that I was able to read through NetGalley. It's a horror comic, uh, Something is Killing the Children, Volume 1. Uh, children are being murdered by monsters in gruesome ways, and a woman appears in town to try and take care of it. I really enjoyed this, uh, although I will say that it kind of raised a lot of questions and there are a lot of things that haven't really been explained but it is the first volume so i expect that that will be covered in more detail in later volumes and so i am looking forward to being able to continue this story there's also seems to be some kind of organization where they all have like possessed plush so I'm intrigued. So that's everything I actually completed reading in May. I am also halfway through this, which is A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison, uh, because this is the one book that I received for my birthday. Whoa, the shine. Uh, because I went to the shops with my partner and I was able to pick out a book for him to get me. And so this is what I got because it's so pretty. And we're also, you know, covering all the age ranges because we've got our children's book here. This is a children's fantasy. We had our YA, we had our adult. <laughs> and yeah, 
children's fantasy uh, following my cat's found something to play with following these sisters um, and you've got magic adventure family pirates like all that good stuff and it also has like fairy tale vibes so I am really enjoying this and it's also making me remember how much I can enjoy like children's fiction uh, because it often does just have that kind of magical whimsy to it uh, and yeah so overall pretty successful reading month really because uh, I had mixed feelings about mayhem but otherwise I really I pretty, pretty much really enjoyed everything I read so success we love to see it for our birthday month and uh, of course maybe it was kind of cheating that three of the books were rereads that I knew I'd love but it was my birthday we do what we want and I hadn't really reread stuff in a long time other than Twilight again <laughs> so um what am I saying we're still watching The Vampire Diaries. Uh, we're actually in the last season, and the last season is not so great. Uh, but yeah, that's what we've been watching. And we also watched five movies. We watched we watched Ready or Not, which is like my one of my new favorite horror movies. It was a horror comedy about a woman who gets married and has to spend the night with her husband's family and she, that she gets hunted and the takeaway is rich people are crazy. We also, I also watched the half of it, which is the new queer movie on Netflix that is really 18 drama. And the thing that's really nice about this movie is that, uh, the thing that's really nice about this movie is that it's more about the friendship than the romance really. And you, that's pretty rare in teen dramas. So that was a really nice movie too. And we watched Baby Driver, which was just fun, kind of action comedy with a young guy that's been roped into having to drive around a bunch of criminals for heists and stuff. That was a good time. And we watched, this week we watched Sleepy Hollow, Tim Burton 90s horror type movie with gothic horror vibes, which I really enjoy. It's got Johnny Depp, who... Who's, a, who's acting can be in a bit of an acquired taste, but I generally enjoy the over-the-top acting. The acting in this movie kind of made me feel like I was watching a play because it was so kind of over-the-top and stuff, but I, I, I did, I could get around that. Uh, you know, the story of the Headless Horseman and all of that stuff. And then the other thing that we watched was my favorite thing I've watched this year. And it was the last thing I actually saw in the cinemas too, before the cinemas closed. And we watched it on my birthday because my partner also bought it for me on Blu-ray for my birthday and that was Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Is that the full title? Um, yeah, I was really worried about this movie because DC doesn't have a great track record and Suicide Squad wasn't great. So I was really worried and had really low expectations but was really happy when I walked out of the cinema and I could probably go on like a at least a 20 minute gush about this movie uh but i'll uh, this 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 video isn't really about the movies I, I watched i just wanted to quickly mention them because i enjoyed everything i watched this month as well so it's been a really good month for media in general i enjoyed everything i watched i enjoyed everything i read and birds of prey is great and we love to see movies that are not catering to the male gaze and are just fun and have lots of little uh, throwbacks to the comics that are really great for people who have read lots of Harley Quinn comics. And yeah. That all being said, it was a good month. What are your favorite things that you have read, watched, played this month? Because I also, I also enjoyed the things I was playing because I have been replaying Fable, which is one of my all time favorite games. And I started playing that for my birthday weekend and streaming it when I hit Twitch affiliate. So that was also a highlight of the month. I'm now Twitch affiliate. I'm home alone on a Friday night and I'm going crazy. <laughs> Let me know what are your favorite things that you consumed this month? Uh, do you have any recommend do you have any particular recommendations for me based on the things that I enjoyed this month that you think are similar 
etc. Always looking for more things that I will love because I don't think I've ever had a month previously that's been as good as this May was in terms of like enjoying pretty much everything I consumed so yeah otherwise stay safe uh, happy reading Stuzzy out and I'm gonna finish my tea in my Darth Vader mug I still haven't seen the most recent Star Wars movie.